Hi there, my name is Adam Boxer and I'm the Education Director at Carousel Learning. Carousel is an online quizzing uh, learning platform that's aimed to help you embed retrieval practice uh, into student homework and into your uh, classroom as well, all in a bid to improve their knowledge, and build their kind of their long term understanding um, over time and across the course of many days, weeks and months. Now, this video is, uh, is a product tour. I'm going to show you around Carousel and what it does, but it's a specific slant on primary school. Um, we've, um, sorry, in primary schools, we've just launched what we call Carousel Primary, which is the way that we've tailored and fashioned the product um, specifically for primary practitioners. Um, and so what I want to do in this video is, is kind of show you around that, show you how it works and, and what we've tried to do to help uh, primary teachers. So Bully, this is your dashboard. It's your kind of kind of carousel homepage and it's split up into three areas. I'm just going to direct your attention to this bottom bit here where it says my question banks. Now, question banks are the beating heart of carousel. Um, they are essentially the the thing that you want your students to know by the end of the time they're done with you. Uh, that's what goes into the question banks. Uh, and if we have a look, so I've got one here, which is about biomes. And if I were to have a look here, all you'd see is it's just uh, simply just a list of questions and answers. So for example, what's a biome? There's a neat definition for you. What's an ecosystem? Another, again, neat definition for you. Six types of biome, you've got them there. These are the things that we want our students to know. By the time we're, they're done, we're done teaching them, by the time the end, we finish the unit or the term or whatever, these are the things that we want them to know. If we want them to know it, it goes into this question bank. Um, we create these very simply in Excel. You just make a spreadsheet that says number, question, and then answer. And you can just end topic and you just upload that straight away. Now, what you should actually see here as well, do you see where it says wrong answers? That's because this question bank is set up for multiple choice as well. So when we have a look here, we can see what is a biome. There are a few options of things that are wrong as well. And you can see that for any of these. Uh, so what is a biome's climate? And again, you can see um, the kind of incorrect answers that we've put in here. And we'll see how that plays out shortly. Now, you might want to create those yourself. So you might say, right, I'm about to te be teaching uh, Roman Britain. Um, I want to sit down and I want to think really hard about the things that I want my students to know about Roman Britain. And so what you do is you'd open up an Excel spreadsheet. We have templates that we provide as well. And you just start writing and you start thinking, well, these are things I want them to know. These are things I don't want them to know. I'll move those aside. What order do I want the students um, to learn them in? Um, and, you know, build your sequence that way. Now, that takes time. Uh, you might not have that time. So what we've done is we've built our own question banks. Um, we've had them quality assured by um, uh, some primary practitioners. So John Hutchinson and Ella Martin um, have quality assured and you know really helped us along building these banks. Um, and you can find those all in the community over here. So if you just click on the community, this is the area where all the teachers, everyone who uses Carousel has shared all of their hard work. The first thing you can see is a whole bunch of stuff, um, Spanish, German, biology, none of that interests me. You know, biology, chemistry, that's all very GCC, it's very year 11, I don't really want that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go to the key stage over here and I'm gonna go key stage two. And here I'm gonna see these green ones. Now these ones here, you see here it says carousel primary. These are the ones that we've produced and you can see there's biomes, we've already got that. So you can see it says add, add is grayed out because I've already added it. But here's the Roman Britain one. And if I wanted I could take a look, Oh, sorry, I've got, to, I've got to take a look first here. Take a look, and there's the questions. And I think, oh, yes, 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 I like those. Nice, lots of nice questions. Um, and I would have been able to add it if I hadn't done it already. But that's now added to my dashboard. And I can do that with any of these. So we've got science, which covers the entire national curriculum for science at year four, five, and six. You can see that right here. And again, it's categorized by year four, year six. Oh, it's got year three as well forces and magnets, it's all there and I can add that if I wanted or I can go back to the community. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got, you know, a couple dozen of these. They cover a whole bunch of topics from history, a whole bunch of topics from geography, the whole of science. We've got some maths ones as well with thousands of questions too. So here's addition and subtraction. So we've got addition of two digits or we've got missing number subtraction. So filling in the blanks. Lots and lots of that kind of thing. And all of that can just be added simply to your dashboard. Uh, if you don't want to see carousel primary ones, you can just keep going. And you can see here, there are other ones that other users have added. So Louise Kess has added some science ones. 
or you can see there's sometimes tables ones. Um, that's from Louise here. Mr. Ellison has done some spag ones, punctuation and grammar definitions, and all of these, you know, James Cutting, like these, you know, these um, primary teachers, they've given of their time, they've given their own resources, and you can just add those, no problem. If you want to, you know, you can use these to search it however you like and just find um, the question banks that you want and that suit you the best. So I can see those are now added over here. I've also got, and that's, so like I said, this is like kind of the beating heart. This is, this is it. This is the curriculum. This is the stuff that I want students to know. Obviously, I have to have my classes as well, because I'm going to be setting work for my students to do. Uh, and that all sits in here. Exactly what you see here depends on the type of account you have. If you get a gold account, you'll have to um, create your own classes. And you again, just upload that from Excel, just first name, last name, class name, done. Um, easy peasy. And again, we've got help articles and templates that will guide you through that process. If you have a platinum account, which is what this dashboard is, then a lot of these are created for me um, by like a data manager or um, if we can um, get it to work through your MIS, your management information system. So if you have Sims or Arbor or Bromcom, we can get it to work automatically so that your class is just naturally and automatically populate over there. And the idea is that we're going to take some of these questions and attach them to a class to do some work. We call that, surprisingly, a quiz. We're going to do that here. So we go to the top right corner, we press create new. And I've just done some Roman Britain stuff. Uh, so I've just added that Roman Britain bank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it Roman Britain quiz one. Ooh, quiz one. And the deadline is going to be, um, let's give them you know, a couple of weeks to do it. No problem. And I'm going to choose my Roman Britain. So remember, I've got two question banks. I've got Biomes, I've got Roman Britain. And I can pick my topics. So I can see um, there's nine different topics here. Uh, I quite like the idea of setting a quiz on, uh, let's go for the Roman army, uh, Boudicca and Hadrian's Wall. I can now choose the number of questions I want in my quiz. Uh, and that is, you know, it's completely up to you as a teacher. Um, you know, obviously the more questions you do, the more challenging the quiz and the work is gonna be. So you need to pitch that right. You need to judge the point for your class. Um, which is the kind of the right level of difficulty. And let's say for these guys, I want to do 10 questions. So I can pick my questions. And here I can see these are all the questions that come up in the Roman army, in Boudicca and in Hadrian's Wall. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick, I can pick this one and this one, and I like that one and that one and that one. And I can see that they're all totting up in the top corner um over here which hopefully you can see hopefully my video isn't covering but there's a little number icon in the top or i can just press select random and that'll just give me some random ones and i confirm it's now time to start customizing my quiz first up is multiple choice quiz mode now i showed you before that every question has multiple options uh, and if i wanted to it's default is set to free text quiz which is just uh, the students gets asked the question so for example how long were soldiers in the army for and they just get given a box that says you know to write your answer and they'd write at least 25 years or i can select it to the multiple choice which means they'll get given multiple choice and i will show you what both of those look like from the student end revision mode is incredibly important now when i look at this essentially sorry when the students log into the quiz the first thing they'll see of flashcards of these questions. So they won't do the quiz straight off the bat. They'll see a flashcard that says, how long were soldiers in the Roman army for? And then on the other side, it'll say at least 25 years. And again, I'll show you that a bit later on. Now I could choose to turn that off, which means no flashcards. Ordinarily, by default, that is gonna be on because what I want is for my students to use the flashcards to prepare themselves to take the quiz. However, let's say I want to use carousel as um, informal in-class assessment. So I get out the iPads or the Chromebooks or the laptops, whatever it is I've got. And I say, right, we've just finished learning about Roman Britain. Um, I wanna know how much you guys know. I've set a quiz, it's 20 questions, flashcards are off. You just answer it straight off the bat. Now, that would be really useful for me to set as just in-class assessment, to think about their progress, their learning, um, and, but I wouldn't want revision mode to be on. So I'll just turn it off like that. Now, ordinarily, I'll keep it on. And I now have two more options, revised topics or revised questions. Revised topics says, well, look, 
out of these, there's, you know, there's 20 odd questions here and I've only picked 10 of them to be in my quiz. Do I want students when they see the flashcards to see all 20 or do I want them to home in just on those 10? If I press revise topics, they'll see all 20. If I press revise questions, they'll see just those 10. When would I choose one over the other? Again, it depends on you as a teacher. Revised topics is gonna to be harder because they'll have more flashcards, more things to learn. Revised questions is gonna be easier. So it kind of depends on you and, and where the students are in their learning journey. At the beginning of a unit, you might say, right, well, I'm gonna keep it really simple. We're gonna do five questions. We're gonna put it on just revised questions. So it's just five flashcards that I need them to learn and that's it towards the end you might be saying no like these guys they know the stuff really well already i'm going to give them you know 30 flashcards and 15 questions in the quiz or whatever um and and that's the way that i want to push them and, and challenge them to be doing better retrieval practice i also have some advanced options which is about quiz attempts um so again if it was an in-class assessment i'd say right you only get one attempt whereas if it's homework i might say no you i'll let you have a retake or i might let you have two retakes and then this final option is about questions in sequential order, which is about the order in which the questions are presented. So you can see here that there's question, this one question first, then that one, then that one, then that one. By default, Carousel shuffles them because it's better for the memory because uh, otherwise students learn them in order and then can't answer them out of order or without a cue. So by default, um, it is not in sequential order, but again, if I wanted to make it a bit easier, I could put it into sequential order. Okay, I'm now ready to set my quiz and I can just press assign and I've got my year six class and I just create the quiz. And I can see that it appears over here. Now, I'm not actually going to access this particular quiz. I'm going to access a quiz that I've set already because I've already populated with that with some answers that I'll, you know, that I'll be able to show you a bit later on. But if I wanted to, I could just set this quiz. Now instead, I'm just gonna look at this quiz because like I said, I've already done some answers for it. And we're gonna start with the tropical rainforest quiz. Now, if I wanna set that for students, I click these three dots here, which are called meatballs, and I just press create link. I then put that link wherever the students can access it. So that might be Seesaw, it might be Google Classroom, it might be Teams, it might be Satchel One, whatever platform you use, you might be just be emailing them to students, whatever platform you use, it doesn't matter, just get them the link. I'm then gonna open a new tab here and I'm just gonna paste that link in because that is literally all the students do. They just click on the link or paste in the link. You know, if you can give it to them as click, that's obviously better because it involves less steps. You just give them a link, click the link, boom, they're there. Now, who am I going to log in as? Um, I'm going to log into this quiz as one of my students who's called uh, Pete Martin. And now I'm in. Now, the amazing thing about what you just saw is that there's no password. There's no username. It's just my name. So there's nothing to lose. There's nothing to forget. Um, there's nothing to get wrong. It's just straight in. Now, this quiz my teacher sent me is about the tropical rainforest. And again, like I said to you before, you've got a revise option and a quiz option. I'm going to start by revising. And here I've got access to some flashcards. So what is the largest tropical rainforest in the world? Show answer. Ah, the Amazon. Happy days. And I can move on to the next one. Where are they found? So actually, as a student, I can't quite remember that. So I'm going to check it. Uh, near the equator okay and then i'm going to test myself again i'm going to say where are tropical rainforests found near the equator and we teach our students and it's always a good idea to explicitly show your students how to do this we teach our students to speak out their answers or to write them down uh, we give them mini whiteboards to write answers to because basically as long as they're just sitting there like this yeah i know that yeah, I know that too. Yep, I know that one as well. And that, yeah, no problem. Yeah, 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 all good, all good. Yeah, I'm done, I know this. Then it's not really good preparation. Um, it's not really gonna help them all that much. So um, we, so like I said, we train them. We say, sit down, learn these properly and only quit when you're absolutely 100% ready. I'm not gonna take the quiz. Uh, and it gives me a little warning. It says, once you started, you cannot quit and restart. Are you sure you're ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All ready. What is the biodiversity like in red tropical rainforests? So I think this is very high. Okay, lots of different species. I'm cool with that. Where are tropical rainforests found? We did that one just before. It's near the equator. Okay, all good so far. In tropical rainforests, most of the trees deciduous or evergreen. Uh, 
I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, what is precipitation like in tropical rainforests? Low? I can't remember. I'm going to put low. And what major threats are facing tropical rainforests? So that one I do know. Deforestation and climate change. Now, it's now time to mark the quiz. Now, this is where Carousel differs from a lot of other products, um, you know, as, as well as a lot of the stuff that we saw about the question banks and things like that, the community. Um, one of the areas where we um, divert is that the marking is done as like a joint enterprise between Carousel and the student. Sometimes um, students will go the, the platform marks the students work for them and often it can be a bit quirky so um, a capital letter that's misplaced and the system will tell them you're wrong um, things along those lines uh, so what we do instead is is the the platform will mark some answers and i'll show you that in a second but the students actually get to self-assess their work so i'm going to go mark quiz and what you see is the question appears here this is my answer this is what i wrote and then this is the correct answer. So this is the answer from the flashcards from the question bank. And it says, based on the correct answer, do you think you've answered this correctly? And I get to judge, am I right or am I wrong? And again, you'll want to explicitly train your students how to do this for sure. Um, but it allows them to like almost have that, that second opportunity to think hard about their learning. It's almost like a second opportunity at retrieval. Like, like, like I'm, I'm trying to like think very hard about has what is what I've written matching the official correct answer so for this one i'm going to say yep i'm right now this one i got an exact match so platforms marked it for me now you'll know that i didn't use a capital um but the platform says yeah it's fine anyway uh it's not a problem um you know really like unless you're doing you know if, if that's incredibly important to you then again you just teach your students that they need to be using um their capitals for these short answer questions uh, in tropical rainforests, and most of the trees deciduous or evergreen. I wrote, I don't know. Now the platform knows that that's wrong. <laughs> yeah, IDK, not sure, blank answers. I don't know any of those. The platform's just going to mark, boom, straight off the bat is wrong. What is the precipitation like in tropical rainforests? So I wrote low, and it says here lots of rain. So this is definitely wrong. And then this one again, perfect match. Happy days. Go to the summary. Okay, um, now in the summary, it shows me all of my responses and it gives me another chance to change my answers. So, you know, the precipitation one, if I wanted to, I could change that back to correct. And then I just press submit and then I'm done. I can see my results, which takes me back to that page or I can take a retake and go back to the flashcards. What we're going to do is we're going to go back to the dashboard and we're going to have a look here at the tropical rainforest quiz and we're going to see now that uh, who did we log in and yeah hit pete martin has now submitted the quiz now before i show you what we do with that because some of you are thinking wait hang on you just let the kids mark it and that's it no no don't worry i'll show you what we do with it in a minute but what i want to show you first is the multiple choice functionality so in this case i've set a quiz about the savannah so again i'm gonna create a link And I go to my next tab and I paste it. And I'm now going to log in as Pete Martin again. And here I am. So the Savannah quiz that uh, Mr. Boxer has set is actually multiple choice. Now, I mean, I still get access to those flashcards, okay? Because the flashcards are like, it's memory preparation, it's getting you ready for a quiz, whatever style the teacher set, the flashcard work is crucial. But when I take the quiz, it looks different. It now shows it to me um, as multiple choice. And I now can say, what's the precipitation like in Savannah grasslands? And I can see that all of these are like, like plausible. You know, it doesn't say, um, you know, I think the correct answer here is uh, precipitation is very high in winter, very low in summer. But like, it doesn't say like, you know, if this answer was Queen Elizabeth, like, I'd know that's wrong. It's not plausible. So it's a bad multiple choice question. So we've tried as much as possible to make sure that every response here is kind of plausible or makes sense. Uh, I move ahead by diversity. Oh God, I've got absolutely no idea. So I'm going to go with loads very high. Uh, major threats. This one I know uh, it is deforestation and ooh, hunting. No, no, de no deforestation because there aren't forests in the grasslands. So it's farming, hunting, climate change. That's good. 
Um, what is the temperature like in savannah grasslands? Uh, it's mostly high, I think. Uh, oh God, I don't know. I'm just going to go with this. I think it ranges from high to low throughout the year because I know it does go quite low. So we'll go with that one. Uh, and where are they found? They're found in Africa and North America. And I go Mark Quiz. Now, obviously, there's no like moderation here because it just tells me what the right answer is because it's multiple choice. The computer can mark that, no problem. I got this one wrong, unfortunately. I got that one right. Yes. I've got that one wrong to bed. Okay. Uh, and I got that one right. And now I go to my summary. And again, I can see all my responses. I can't moderate them. There's nothing to moderate there. I just press submit and then I'm done. Now, what does the teacher do next? So here I am back and I go again to that quiz and I just refresh it and I can see now that Pete Martin has taken it. So let's start with the tropical rainforest quiz, which was the one that students wrote their answers to. So I press on the three dots here and I go mark quiz. Now the platform automatically locks the quiz once I've started marking it. I can unlock it of course, but it means that students can't do that one um, as long as I'm in the process of marking it. And I get given a screen that looks like this. So it gives me the question, it gives me the answer, it gives the score that the students got in this particular question, uh, and then it shows me all of the responses. Now I look at these and I see that a lot of them word for word, which I'm pretty pleased about. And I see James Bond here has written near the equator. Now it gives a little I, which means the student has had to mark that manually. These ones, they were automatically marked as right because they're word for word. This one sort of worries me a bit because James has marked it right, but like, does he really understand? Is that just a typo? Or does he think there are lots of different types of equator? Like, for example, you know, you've got the different tropics. Does he think that those are also like equators? And that's where the rainforests are found. So I actually, I kind of want to unpick that a little bit. So I'm just going to put a tick over there. And we'll come back to what that means later on. Um, now, uh, when I look at this one, was precipitation like in tropical rainforest? So James, get, I mean, you know, this is fine. I'm happy with that. This one I'm not happy with because there's a spelling error uh, and I'm actually going to change that to wrong. Uh, now this one here, Olive, yeah, this answer like, sticks out like a sore thumb. Olive has Googled it 100%. Okay. Now how I choose to raise that is up to me as a teacher. I might want to just quietly talk to Olive about it. I might want to highlight it to the class, but anonymously, not say this is an Olive's answer. I might want to highlight it to the class for discussion, but I definitely want to change it to wrong because it's just a joke. Okay, now that's low, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, and I look at these and get like Tiago is taking the mic here, so I'm going to change that to incorrect. I go like, what's he thinking? It's definitely wrong. We move ahead. Um, uh, okay, good answers. Uh, but, 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 no, hey, this one's really interesting. Because Olive has written climate change and deforestation and marked it as wrong. Now, that is actually right. I imagine they marked it wrong because they got it in the wrong order and they thought that, that was somehow like, crucially important. So I want to talk to the class about that one as well. Before I analyze the results, then I'm just going to head. Out. Actually, I tell you what, let's quickly analyze the results. The so analyze results just shows me like a snapshot of all of the responses and all of the scores. So question one, I can tell everyone got it right. Question two, bit dodgy. Question three, bit dodgy. Question four, okay. And question five, pretty good as well. I can also see my lowest score results. So Tiago is a bit of a worry, whereas I'm quite proud of Peter. Instead of going back to the dashboard, I'm gonna to go to this thing called feedback. This is one of like, it's one of my favorite features in Carousel. Uh, and actually it's one that our primary teachers tell us is one of the most useful to them too. The feedback thing is about, the whole idea here is about showing students that the work they do is like integrated and like the homework they do, that retrieval work, that practice they do at home is tied into classwork. And one of the ways to show that is by talking to the group about things that they found hard. So what we see here is we see first an average score, so the average score across the class. Now me personally, with my classes, I tend to aim for 75 to kind of 90% in the quiz. If it's much lower than 75, maybe 70, if it's much lower than that, I'm worried that students are making too many mistakes. They don't know it well enough. Uh, maybe the quiz that I've set is too hard, or maybe they're not in good habits and I need to do something about that. 
if it's above 90 percent, then I'm sort of a bit worried that it's too easy uh, and that maybe I need to increase the difficulty by setting them some more questions, uh, setting them some tougher questions, setting them questions from a longer time ago, uh, something along those lines. But I'm sort of aiming for that 75 to sort of 90 percent window. I can also see though that, they're, that the top score is 100%. And what I wanna be saying to the class is, look, you know, I might not name the student who got 100%, but I'll be saying, look, everyone in here is capable of getting 100%. Look, it's been proved. You know, there's a couple of you that did get 100% and you know, amazing, well done to them, but everyone can do that. Now, you, obviously like what I've just said is that you don't actually want everyone to be getting 100%, but the students don't need to know that. You just say you know, to students that they should be aiming for 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100% every time. Okay, um, then the first section here brings up the questions that had the lowest scores. So do you remember when we looked at analyze, there was one question that had 50%, one question that had 50%, one question that had 66%. It brings those questions up and it's normally like three to five questions, the hardest ones, uh, the ones that students got wrong the most. I use this then in class. So if the homework is due on say Tuesday, um, at the beginning of my geography lesson on Tuesday, um, I will put this, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not a primary teacher, but, you know, in a primary context, that's what I would be doing. And my geography, you know, the start of your geography lesson, that's what you'd be putting up on the boards. And essentially, this is your way of checking the student's response to getting things wrong. Because if a student is getting something wrong at home and then getting it wrong again in class, it means that they're making that error, they're not doing anything about it. And that's kind of important for you to know as a teacher, because what you want is for them to get something wrong at home and then to go away and work at it until they get it right. And then to come to class, knowing it and getting it right. And the more you build that over time, the better uh, your take up and the better the quality of your students retrieval is going to be. And I'll put, I might put those up and students might answer on many whiteboards or they might answer in their book um, or whatever. And then I can show the answers one by one. We can go over that as a class or I can put them all together. Either way, it works fine. Underneath that is where it gets really, really cool. Because this is where um, all of those answers that I ticked go. So for example, in, uh, what is precipitation like in tropical rainforests? So here, first comes up the spelling mistake, the one that I ticked, and second is that Googled answer. Why is this so cool? It's so cool because these are an amazing springboard for class conversation. I'll put that up and I say, why is this wrong? And we might verbally uh, discuss that, or again, I might ask for mini whiteboards. However I do that, it's really useful for me because like not only does it allow me to pick up, how, do students know how to spell the word high? One, do students know what the wrong spelling of the word high is? Um, but also it shows the students that like, I'm reading every one of their answers, you know, I'm marking it, I'm, I'm taking care over it. Now you saw the marking process doesn't take long, the way we lay out the answers makes it dead easy, dead straightforward and dead quick to do but it's that messaging is so important. If the students think that they do work at home and no one's going to check it, the quality and the quantity of that work is going to decline. And there's also this, and I might put that up and I'll say to students, why, why do you think I put this one here? Why don't you think I found it interesting? And then we'll discuss that someone Googled it. And, you know, I'll, I'll frame it positively. I'll say, look, you know, I'm sure the person who did this thought they were doing the right thing. They thought, oh, if I don't know it, I'll just search online. But like, it's very clear that that doesn't mean you actually know it. You don't understand it just because you've copied it from Google. I'd much rather you leave it blank, get it wrong, go back to the flashcards, learn it, and then retake the quiz. And again, that class and conversation is incredibly powerful to have. And then I look at these ones. And again, this is the answer that was kind of the wrong way around. So the student who wrote uh, climate change and deforestation, when the correct answer is deforestation and climate change, and I want to talk about that as a group. And then again here, I want to pick up on that and I want to explore that and see if that's a genuine misconception or if it's just a typo. All right, I'm going to go back to my dashboard. And that's my tropical rainforest quiz done. Now I've also got the Savannah quiz, which was multiple choice. Now this is not really about marking, it's more about reviewing because there's nothing to mark on a multiple choice. Like the computer's done it for you. So I'm gonna begin reviewing it and it gets locked again. And I now goes question by question. So where is Savannah Grassland's found? This was the correct answer. This is what students wrote. I could include it in feedback again if I wanted to, um, but I've shown you that, so I'm not gonna you know, del delve into that too much, but I also get like a little bar chart that shows me all of the responses here. When I go to the next one, I see, oh, this is a problem. This is a real problem. It's a problem because I've only got one student getting it right. 
which is worrying to me because a lot of kids are getting it wrong. But also, do you see the height of this D1? The thing that I'm worried about is that there's actually a misconception and that students think that D is the right answer. You know, on some of them, like, uh, I don't know, here, like there's quite an even spread of wrong answers, right to wrong, I guess. You know, there's nothing that jumps out at me. And I, I'm looking at that and I'm just thinking, right, the kids just don't know it. You know, uh, this one they do know, but, you know, this one they just don't know. But then when I look at this one and I see that kind of big spike around one specific wrong answer, that makes me worried. It makes me think that there's a misconception here that I want to unpick. And that's the kind of thing then that I would be including in the feedback. So I've done my two quizzes. I've marked them. I've delivered feedback in class. Uh, I've looked at analysis of each quiz. I can also look at analysis um, as it plays out over time in this tab over here. So let's say we're talking geography again. Uh, it's year six and it's this class and I'll pick the Savannah quiz and the tropical rainforest quiz. And here I can see the students and I can see their score in the first quiz and I can see their score in the second quiz. And if I highlight, I'll tell me which one it is. So that was the Savannah quiz. That was the tropical rainforest quiz. And it will show me their scores as they build over time. So Tiago, you know, he did really badly in quiz two, but he actually did okay in quiz one, you know, and Terra is kind of the opposite. So reading too much into one quiz might not be the right call and it might be that you know i'm setting them a quiz every single week and i want to see how that builds up over time uh, and i want to see like how a student is tracking over time as opposed to just like a one-off um here or there so it really just kind of depends on your needs and what you're looking for the final thing that i want to show you is uh, another feature that is massively massively popular with um, primary teachers, which is the whiteboard mode. Now the whiteboard mode brings carousel into your classroom. So um, let's say, you know, we're about to do a lesson on, um, uh, I don't know, geography quiz again, geography starter quiz, that's what we'll call it. And we'll pick our biomes question bank and we can now pick from these topics again. And let's say I wanna ask my students six questions at the beginning of the lesson. And I want three questions on tropical rainforests. Select them. And again, I can pick them at random or I can choose individual ones. And then I want three questions on tundra. Pick three and select random. And the way I want it is I want those three questions on tropical rainforests first and then three questions on tundra. So I'll tick that. So it'll show them in sequential order. I go show now, boom. And that is projected up onto my board uh, or onto student screens if you've got one-to-one, -one, whatever it is. And you can see that I've got three questions on the tropical rainforest and then three questions on tundra. I can go back and I can take them off sequential order and I can maybe add another topic. So let's say I also wanna do deciduous forests and I just want two questions from that. And I go show now, and then it shows it to me right like that and I've now got the eight questions you can use that as a lesson starter you can use it at the end of a lesson you can use it you know it's just like a, a lightning break in the middle of a lesson just like pause do a bit of quizzing and then get back to it that kind of thing and I can go over the answers one by one or I can go over the answers all at once however I like okay and again like you know I'm a secondary teacher and all of my you know I have different students for every lesson every single one of my lessons start like this but you know if you're teaching four different topics subjects in a day you can definitely start each session with one of those um or what um, a lot of our primaries do as well is they if they've set a quiz on tundra as well as doing the feedback in class they might start the lesson with you know six questions about tundra um, again to check how well students are actually doing that work at home um, we also have, there's some other features as well, like study packs, for example, which is where you essentially make um, your question bank available to the students. So you say, right, well, I've got this biomes question bank. I want all students to be able to see that. Um, and what they can do is they can log in by the link. They can make their own quizzes. So instead of you making quiz for them, they can make their own flashcards, their own quizzes, that kind of thing. Um, okay, so that is kind of carousel in a nutshell. Uh, we saw the question banks, which are the beating heart of um, carousel, and you can make those yourself you know, just simply from your curriculum in Excel, 
or you can take ours um, from the community. And again, we've got our internal quality assured ones that we prepared, or you've got ones from teachers across the country, across the world actually, um, who have given of their own free time and their resources. Uh, you've got your classes, which is just where your students sit. And then you've got your quizzes. You can do short answer, you can do multiple choice. You can edit the way that students access the flashcards. You can then mark them. Uh, students take the quiz, students self-assess, you then moderate their work, you get to analyze it, you get to give them feedback and you get to see how that plays out over time. And then use the whiteboard as well to really help like hammer home the importance of that retrieval practice and the importance um, of, um, I guess, doing it well at home so that it makes a difference in class. Um, that's the end of this uh, product tour. Um, there'll be there's some links in the comments to this that will take you um, to be able to get in touch with us or to our um, home site so you can learn more. We've got a whole bunch of information uh, aimed directly at primary teachers. And if you are interested, there's an email address there as well um, to get in touch. And if you want to get a quote from us, that's obviously, you know, you know that's great. Uh, you can email me directly. Um, at adam at carousel-learning.com. That's adam at carousel-learning.com. In the meantime, happy quizzing.